Well, good morning, Lifehouse family. So glad you're joining us today for Church Online or Sabbath Sunday, wherever you're joining us from. Just sincerely want to say welcome. So glad you're joining us. If it is your first time encountering Lifehouse, would love for you to fill out the Connect card uh, that you should see a link for in the chat section. Uh, fill it out. We'd love to send you a free gift as a way. Uh, just a small way of saying thank you for joining us. And if you're local, you've never visited us before at the Kiln Creek Regal, we'd love for you to join us next Sunday, 9 or 1045, identical services at the Kiln Creek Regal. But actually, we're not going to be at church uh, next week because next week is church at the park. And speaking of church at the park, man, we have had such a massive response to that. Um, we got almost 400 people registered. And so the blessing in that is that a lot of people are coming and a lot of people that don't typically attend LifeHouse, but also uh, the need for volunteers has grown a little bit. So we're going to be sending out some information to some of you about assisting us with serving food, with parking cars, um, with greeting people, and just wanting to make the day uh, as much of a blessing to those who come as possible. We need some people uh, to put their trunks, to make their trunks available for trunk or treat. We need some of you to make some chili for the chili cook-off. So we love what God is doing through church at the park. It's going to be an amazing day. We're going to do worship. I've got a message on my heart. But we are uh, looking for you to get involved. Um, so definitely attend, but also, too, if you would feel led to also assist in helping us make this day a blessing to all those that come. And so uh, you should see a link on the screen. Not a link. You should see a word, a keyword. I think it's texting PARK to 757-690-2401, sending information to register. And like I said, we're going to be reaching out to some of you uh, to assist us. So super excited about that. So next Sunday, we are not at Kiln Creek We are at Church at the Park, Newport News Park. 11 a.m. is when we're going to be getting started. But secondly, um, also next weekend, we have got our men's retreat. So if you are a man, you're watching this, you have to sign up for our, our men's retreat. want to invite you to do so. You can text men, 757-690-2401. Would love for you to sign up. We have a few slots left. It's going to be an amazing weekend for us men as we come together, grow as brothers in Christ, but grow in our relationship with him while we have some fun and eat good food. Sounds like a party to me. All right. All right. Hey, before we dive in today, let me pray. Get our heart, mind, and spirit ready to receive God's word. So let's pray. Lord, we love you. We invite you into this time together as we hear your word. May it bring truth to our souls, revelation. Lord, and through this word, may we become more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and type amen in the chat section. And let's go ahead and dive in. Today, we are in between series. We just got done with our Better Religion series. And we're going to be going into a series on Colossians uh, starting November 10th after church at the park. So today, I actually had an opportunity to preach a message um, that I am remixing. Everyone type in remix in the chat section. And I am remixing a message I've preached before, but I felt the Lord stir my heart to share it in a remixed way. How, you know, how many of you got a song, you know, um, you, you song, but, but then somebody goes and remixes it. Uh, that's what I'm doing with this sermon. And so really excited to do that today. And it's called How to Handle a Thorn. How to Handle a Thorn. Uh, my life verse, if I have a... a if I have life verses, they are 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. And to give a little context of this, this is Paul. He's writing to the church in Corinth, and he is sharing with them a very vulnerable piece of his story, where at the beginning of chapter 12, Paul says he was given these great revelations. So he said, I, he, he literally said, like, I went to a third heaven. He said, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. I'm not sure. He said, but the things I saw and experienced, I, he said, I don't know if I can even tell another human being. And so he was, you know, he had a spiritual high. And then like right after he shares with the church in Corinth that he had this spiritual high, he then says this in verse number seven. He says, then I was given a thorn in my flesh. Then it says to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he, Jesus said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles um, that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. These are some of my life verses because I related so much to these. Because um, when it speaks about a thorn, I have a thorn that has been poking in my side for all of my life. And I'm sure you have as well, because that's one of the things that I love is that when Paul talks about a thorn in the flesh, he doesn't mention what the thorn is. He just says he has a thorn, it's something that's bothering him. And even when you look at what the definition of a thorn is, a thorn is a, a source of continual annoyance, trouble, or weakness. Do you have any things that are continual annoyances, weaknesses, <laughs> um, or troubles for you? 
And a thorn can be a lot of things. It can be maybe a person, a relationship, a physical handicap, maybe a divorce you've walked through, a bad financial decision you're still reaping the consequences of, maybe it's a medical diagnosis, maybe it's a mental health issue, maybe it's a decision that you made in the past that uh, you consider one of life's biggest regrets. Maybe it was the death of a child or a parent that still hurts and ways of grief still come up. Maybe it's a simple habit, hurt or hang up. It's anxiety or depression. Are y'all seeing that life can be full of different thorns and Paul, writer of two thirds of the New Testament says, I've got a thorn that has been with me a long time and it will not stop. I've shared with you my thorn multiple times. If you're new to our church, my thorn throughout my life has been stuttering. And now you can watch, watch me preach now or something like that. And you can be like, man, John, it doesn't seem like you really stutter. Like I've had people tell me that have been new to the church. Like, John, I don't even realize you stutter. And I'm like, I get it. I've improved a whole lot by God's grace. I can speak for the most part clearly. Uh, but it's, that has not always been the case. And I can, there's this one video of when I was like 21 years old, I was in a discipleship program um, that I just want to show you real quick that kind of gives you a picture of how I, um, how much of a struggle was uh, to talk. And so I just want you to watch this real quick. Through Master's Commission, God has 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 shaped me and molded me into the, the, the leader that he wants me to become. Also, also my my dream, which is touching young young people's lives, is becoming is becoming real is becoming realized. Also, also through the, the 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 revelation of God's word and through and through prayer, I have grown in in the most Im important thing, which is my relationship with Jesus Christ. Man, that is that is hard to watch. I'm not gonna lie, um, hard to to think about because I can look at that video and I can see John when he was 20, 21 years old, just full of fear, insecurity, worry. Um, and, and just how it, it was and even sometimes is a thorn in my flesh where I'm like, God, why don't you just take this away from me? Oh, so you want me to be a stuttering pastor? Okay, this, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I can relate with these verses and why these verses have ministered to me so much is because I can relate with a thorn and I'm sure you can too. And what I feel like the Lord uh, remixing to tell you today, to almost remind you of is how to handle thorns in life, how to handle thorns life. Because what you see in these scriptures is Paul goes from begging God to take it away, right? He says three times, I begged the Lord to take this thorn away. So he goes from begging the Lord to, th to, to take it away to a place of him saying, I'm thankful for these things. How does he go from begging God to take it away to now I'm thankful for the thorn? That's what I want to talk to you about today. Because I believe in the same way Paul resaw his thorn, reframed his thorn, we can do the same. And we can look at the thorn we have and we can look at it a different way. And instead of begging God to take it away, we can say, God, you can use it for something to make me more like you. Reframing, I think, is the key word. And when you actually look at what a lot of therapists do, ther therapists help us reframe things. Therapists might not even give us the right answers, but they might give us the right perspective. And many times we don't need something to be fixed. Many times we just need a different perspective on it. And even when you look at like what reframing is, it says this reframing is a technique used by counselors to shift a client's view of a particular problem, event, or person. It is based on the assumption that when clients are able to view a situation from another perspective, opportunities for finding alternative, acceptable solutions to their problems increase. And that is what I hope to you today. I'm, I'm going to give you three ways that we can reframe our thorns to do what Paul did, to go from begging God to take it away to, Lord, I'm thankful for it, and, you, and you're actually using it to make me more like you. So how do we do that? Three ways. Number one, we have to pray with discernment instead out of reaction. We have to pray with discernment instead of reaction. So Paul's first response to when he had a thorn that was continually hurting him, that was continually poking him, was to beg God to take it away. And I don't think there's any doubt as we encounter thorns, whether it's a person, whether, whether it is a hurt, a habit, a hang up, something that is a continual annoyance or trouble, our first response is to, God, take this away. And I think we have to be very careful that when we pray, we are not praying for God to make something easier for us. We are praying as Jesus did, thy will be done. 
I love Jesus sets the example for us that when he was encountering pain, when he was in the garden, Scripture says sweating blood, knowing what was before him, knowing that the cross was before him. He did not pray, well, God, uh, this is going to be so easy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. No, he, he did not try to fake his way towards feeling something. He shared how he felt. He said, God, the Father, if there's any way that you can take this away from me, would you do it? But not my will, your will be done. He shared how he felt, he prayed a desire, but then he took his desire and set it before the Father and said, I want what you have for me. And that is where when we're dealing with a thorn, it's not wrong to ask God to take it away, right? We see Paul do it, we see Jesus do it. But at the same time, in asking him to take it away, we also have to be aware that God the Father might have a different way that's different than ours. So we have to, I mean, because even, even Jesus said, ask. So ask, you shall receive. Seek, you will be found. Knock on the door, we'll be open for you. And even scripture tells us, like, if we have a need, ask God. We have not because we ask and not. But here's the thing. Even in our asking, we can ask, but we also have to be prepared to receive what his answer is. So ask, but yet at the same time, if God, if you ask and God does not take that thorn away, either until he takes it away if the thorn is there, maybe the prayer needs to shift from, Lord, take it away to, Lord, how do you want to use this thorn to shape me to be like you? I can relate with this so much because I mean, I'll tell you how many times I've prayed to God to take this thorn away. Take it away. Take it away. Lord, that's a stutter, but Lord I'm, I want to be, speak freely. And in, in some ways he's done that, but I can also know that it hasn't been a zap from God like he, he just all of a sudden made me speak clearly. There's been a lot of internal healing. There's been a lot of work. There, there's been a lot of sweat equity and not just zap equity from God, of God like saying, be healed. No, it's work that I've had to engage in to do kind of what Paul said, to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Essentially, as God works in me, I work out. Whereas I've gotten parts of my soul healed, as I've become more aware of God's presence around me than my weakness inside of me, what I found even as a byproduct in my physical body is that I, I am speaking clearly now because I'm more aware of his presence and power and availability than I am aware of my weakness. But that has been a lot of work to make that happen. Am I still praying for God to take it away? You're dang right. But I'm going to say, even if he's not going to take it away, that's not going to keep me from pushing towards healing, from pushing and saying, Lord, how can you take this thorn and use it to make me more like you are? I, I, I really pray you're hearing what I'm saying. Because here's the truth. God is more concerned with your development than he is with your comfort. I want to say that one more time. God is more concerned with your development than he is with your comfort. And it's absolutely wild and crazy because... I can see how this has been true in my life. I pray God, God, take away stuttering, but nothing has been used in my life to shape me to be more like Jesus than my thorn of stuttering. It's made me rely on God. I'm in a profession where I speak for a living. Every time I'm like, Lord, I, I, I need you. Lord, I need to rely on you. And God in his kindness has not taken it away but he's used it. This is Romans 8, 28, right? Where we have to believe it's, you know, Romans 8, 28 says, God works all things for this, all things for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That verse does not say that all things are good, but it does say that God is so good that he will take all things and make it work for our good and for his glory if we let him do that. And that is what the Lord has done. Is stuttering good? No, I hate it. Yet at the same time, God has used it in his sovereignty in his providence in his way to shape me and mold me and has worked it for my good and i can know that why because anything that moves me towards jesus and being more like him is good <laughs> and this is how thorns can actually be a blessing to us one of the ways that we can go like paul from begging god to take it away to i'm actually thankful for it and it's actually crazy because i can in many ways most of the time 85 to 90 percent of the time i can say lord thank you for the thorn has it been easy no but i'm so grateful that you're more concerned about my development than you are about my comfort and that's what my heart is for some of you today where your thorn 
it, your life is thorny. And just you hope you heard how I pronounce that thorny, right? That, that in those thorns, you actually see it. I'm not telling you don't pray. Pray, pray, pray the God. And sometimes God does. But if God hasn't done that yet, he's wanting to use the thorn to shape you. That's why it's important for us to pray with discernment instead of reaction. Because here's the thing. You could be praying against the very thing God wants to use to shape you to be like him. That's why we need discernment, not just reaction. Okay, the second thing, how we can reframe and see our thorns differently. Number two, we, we, we got to talk about it. Y'all, we have to talk about our thorns. Some of you are suffering in silence right now because you're handling and dealing with your thorn by yourself. This is what Paul said. He said, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses. Essentially, what he's saying is, I don't mind talking about my weaknesses. Now, can you imagine how hard this was for Paul? Because I don't think we understand like how much of a baller Paul was. Paul was like the rabbi of rabbis, trained under the, one of the greatest Jewish rabbis, Gamaliel. Even when he was writing to the book in, or to the church in Philippi, he, he wrote to them a letter. And that letter in chapter three basically said like, I have the pedigree of a baller. I got good bloodline. I've got, uh, he said, when it comes to the law, I'm smarter than everybody. He said, I've, I've kept the law to a T. Like Paul was somebody that would probably appear to everyone as not having a weakness. And I can just imagine how hard it was for him to pray for something. But God said, no. This is wild to me that Paul, I mean, I can see, I can hear Paul right now. Like Paul's like, God, really? You're going to tell me no. I'm the one planting churches. I'm the one writing scripture. I'm, I'm the one suffering for the gospel. And I'm just asking you to take this one thought away. Why aren't you doing it? And I think in, in some ways, because Paul needed to be broken because he was tempted towards pride. Because even in Philippians 3, he said, if anyone has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I've got more. And, that, and that's when he listed his pedigree. He's like, this is who I am. This is what I've done. And I feel like Paul, even as a way to protect Paul from Paul, had to experience weakness. But what I love about Paul, he didn't keep it to himself. He wasn't afraid, as he said, boast about it, to talk about it. I want to encourage some of you that are struggling with a private thorn, how important it is to get into a safe place and talk about it and share with somebody that is a safe person. This is something I'm passionate about at LifeHouse. Lifehouse, we have to be a place where people can share their struggles and their thorns to a safe place. Now, one of the things I think we can do that whenever people share something they're struggling with is we do a couple things. Number one, uh, we try to fix them. <laughs> Number two, we spiritualize things they share or we devalue them or we dominate them, right? So someone will share, hey, I'm struggling with this. Well, just read your Bible 30 days straight. Right? Or, or, well, God works all things to the good. Or, yo, you're struggling with that. Well, this is what I'm struggling with. <laughs> and, like, I, you know, I think all of these can be attempts with a good heart to want to help people. But actually, what that can do is that can have people shut down. They can have them devalue what they're walking through. And it can even give them wrong theology. Because when people share things they're walking with, what people need is empathy. This word's been very important in our church as I've walked through the healing that the Lord's done in me. The power of empathy is that even one of the reasons why Jesus came in the flesh is to give us empathy. That's what we see in Hebrews 4. It says we have a high priest. We, we have a God who, is, who can empathize with us. So when we go to him for help, he's not like, why would you need help for that? Why would you struggle with that? It says that he's been tempted in every way we were, yet is without sin. And it was like Jesus came down and experienced everything we experienced. So when we go to him, we do not go to someone who hasn't experienced what we have experienced. We go to someone who has experienced and has overcome. But what, what does that do for us? It, Jesus gives us empathy. And empathy is simply this. It means it's okay to not be okay. It is a safe place. It means you can share not from where you think you should be, but from actually where you are. And if I'm giving you empathy, if I'm being a safe place for you, I'm not going to try to cheerlead you and just tell you everything's okay. I'm not going to scripture verse you and shut you down. I'm not going to spiritualize things. I'm not going to try to fix, fix you. I'm just going to give you a safe place to share. And I'm going to say thank you for sharing that. And then instead of trying to fix, I'm going to ask more questions. 
Y'all, this is what it means to be a safe person and a safe church. I remember uh, a few years ago, I did a sermon series and I did something on social where I asked, you know, what is important in a church to you? And, you know, I'm thinking people are going to say worship or preaching or, you know, life groups or children's programs. And one of the, the top answers was safe. Now, I know when some of you hear that, you're like, man, people are so weak. And, you know, I can't believe that. They, you know, it's no, it's like, here's the thing. I'm, I'm not saying that just because we want to be a safe church doesn't mean we're not going to be a challenging church. You, if y'all, if anyone's been at Lifehouse, you know, this is true. We're like I preached a couple weeks back. We are going to be safety. We're going to be a safe church without compromising the standard of God's word. We will fight to be a place where people can be safe no matter what their thorn is, no matter what their struggle is. But we can be safe without compromising a standard. We can have a standard and we can be safe. Being a safe church involves being safe people. And we create atmospheres where people feel empowered. People feel okay to share what they're walking through. Instead of coming into church and feeling like I have to be at a, like project a certain kind of image to those around me, we can go in and we can be where we are and that's okay. Why? Because ultimately, if we are going to see our thorns differently, we have to share them. Here's the thing, vulnerability is a superpower. And when I'm doing marriage counseling with couples, I always tell them because in, um, whenever we're doing marriage coaching or whenever we're doing premarital coaching, um, there's this portion of the Symbus assessment, saving your marriage before it starts, that we walk through where it talks about red flags, where it kind of talks about maybe some weaknesses the other person has. And what I tell them before we walk into those is this is going to be a very vulnerable place where you're going to be sharing things about yourself. I said, vulnerability is never used as a weapon. Vulnerability is always used as knowledge to know how to love the other person well. And that's what we have to know. For some of you that have not experienced church to be a safe place, maybe because you've been vulnerable and it's come and bit you, bit you the wrong way, that this is something that by God's grace, he's going to have to heal you from. And that we pray being in a safe place, life house, you will experience healing from. But also for some of you that struggle to be vulnerable out of pride, listen, what happens whenever you're vulnerable? It's it's not going to be used as a weapon against you. It's going to be used as a way for us to love you and love each other better because that is the purpose of vulnerability is so we can know how to love each other better. And that's the purpose of practicing vulnerability in a church because there's something powerful when someone shares their thorn and someone says, me too. I can't tell you how many times I've heard another stuttering person and I'm like, you stutter too? Oh my God. Right, only one in a million stuttering like people in the United States stutter. So when I see another stuttering person, man, it's, it's like we are boys from the get, right? Or a girl, whatever. Like we, because we understand the thorn, we understand the struggle. And this is what is one of the superpowers of talking about your thorn, not, not in a reckless way, but in a, in a way that, you know, shares what's going on or what your thorn is, is it can be a way to build community and build relationship and help people see they're not alone. And so if we're going to see our thorn differently, we have to get it out there. And my heart for you is that you know the life house, we're going to strive to be a safe place. Are we going to always hit that mark? Probably, unfortunately not. But if that isn't the, if that's not what you experience, that's a piece of our culture I want to protect. So if you experience that and you don't experience a safe place, please let us know. Because that is what we are striving to be, is a safe place where we keep the, keep the standard of God's word strong, yet we understand that there's going to be any change. If we're going to see our thorns differently from a different perspective, reframe them. We have to get in this place where we share what's on our hearts. So vulnerability. So to reframe our thorn, the first two things, we got to pray with the sermon instead of reaction. Number two, we got to talk about it because that's what Paul said. He said, I'm, I boast about my weaknesses. But the third and final thought that when it comes to how do we reframe our thorns? is this thought, we have to let our thorns be a prompt instead of a trigger. We have to let our thorns be a prompt instead of a trigger. This is what Paul says in the final part of these verses. He says, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let me tell you what Paul is getting at here. Paul was saying that when my thorn 
triggers my weakness. What actually happens is that becomes a prompt to rely on God's strength. I want to say that one more time. That what Paul is saying is that when our thorn, our weakness triggers the weaknesses that comes with having this particular thorn, what it has the ability and potential to become is a prompt to rely on God's strength. This is so powerful because the frustrating part about a thorn is that it can actually be a place where you experience a side of God that you would never experience through your strength. That's what you see Paul saying here. He's, he's like, because of this thorn, it has made me see a side of God's power, grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and hope that I would have never seen unless I had this thorn. So what ends up happening is the thorn actually becomes, instead of a trigger towards unhealthy behavior, unhealthy thoughts, instead of a trigger towards spiraling into our typical mental way of doing things, your thorn actually has the power to become a prompt, a prompt to lean into God's strength. So the thorn becomes a siren. When the thorn starts poking you, that can actually be a reminder to lean in to God's strength that is readily available to you. Because many times what we do is we don't even want to acknowledge a thorn, acknowledge a weakness. And when you ignore your weaknesses, man, I'm preaching right now. When you ignore your weaknesses, you ignore God's strength. <laughs> Some of you are trying to be so strong, you're actually ignoring God's strength. The only way you'll actually acknowledge God's strength is by acknowledging your weaknesses. That is what Paul is doing here. He's saying, I actually learned to be thankful for my thorn because in my thorn is where my strength lies. In my weakness is where God's strength is. So I want to boast about my weaknesses. I, I, I want to find my weaknesses. I want to find my thorns because when I find them, I just don't find my weakness. I find an opportunity for God's strength. I want you to put some clap hands or something. I'm, I'm, I'm by myself in this room right now. I'm about to shout, run around, do Holy Ghost hop, do some feet or something because this is a word for some of you right now. This is a word. This is a word for me right now. Praise God. Right? Is that we are our strongest when we are at our weakest. And God in his grace, either through the whatever of life, through our consequences, whatever, provide for us some thorns so we will be protected from pride, so we will be protected from relying too much on our strength. Whatever your weakness is, let it be a prompt to pray and draw on the Lord's strength. I love what Paul shares because Paul shares different principles in different ways to different churches. And so he even kind of gives this whole thought in the book he wrote to the church in Philippi. We see this in chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. He told the church in Philippi, he said this, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What I see Paul saying here is, he's, like, he's not really saying, like, don't ever worry, or another translation says, don't be anxious, right? He's, he's saying, hey, anxiety and worry, because I think what we do is we just try not to be anxious or worrisome, and then we condemn ourselves. Man, I, I follow Jesus. I have faith. I shouldn't worry. I shouldn't doubt. I shouldn't be anxious, and y'all, I just don't know if that's life. We spend so much time not trying to feel something or do something that we actually miss the power in acknowledging those things we feel and acknowledging those things we do, right? So instead of trying not to feel anxious or worrisome, why don't you take the energy, say, I feel anxious or worried right now, but I'm going to use this as a prompt to pray. Instead of fighting so hard not to feel something, said, you know what, I'm going to come to God as I am, not as I think I should be. And I'm going to take, I'm going to accept his help and his strength right here, right now, right where I'm at. Because Paul was saying, let anxiety be a siren to pray. Let worry 
be a siren to pray. Let worrisomeness be a prompt to pray, to where then your weakness actually becomes a reminder of God's strength. I hope y'all are seeing this. This is so powerful because some of you are keeping the Lord away because you don't want to feel or be a certain way. And the Lord is saying, I can't help you with what you don't even acknowledge, <laughs> right? So it's not a weakness to acknowledge where you are. It's actually a strength because when you acknowledge your weakness, you invite the Lord's strength. I mentioned it earlier, Hebrews 4, 15 through 6 through 16. That's what it says. It says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way we are yet he is without sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is, this is what, when, when you're not afraid to be human, and when I say afraid to be human, I'm like, acknowledge, I'm worried, I'm anxious. When you're not afraid to acknowledge that, you're, you're actually putting yourself in a position to be helped. Because then God sees you right where you are. And Jesus doesn't look down on you and say, oh man, you shouldn't feel anxious. You shouldn't feel worried. He says, I've been there too. And because I've been there, that's why he says this. Let us then approach the throne of grace with boldness and confidence. What Jesus is saying, I'm not condemning you from where you are. I'm inviting you to where I am. And that's what some of you, I prepare some of you here today. He isn't looking down on you because of your thorn. He's inviting you to say, I've worn a crown of thorns. <laughs> I know what thorns feel like. They are painful. He said, but I wore a crown of thorns so your thorn does not have to define you or keep you in a place where you are away from me. He says, let your thorn be the prompt to come into my presence where when you come into my presence, there is a feast waiting for you. Your thorn has the ability and the power to be a place where you experience God. Why? Because you acknowledge your weakness and go to him with your weakness so you can experience his strength. How do we reframe a thorn? What do we see Paul doing? Number one, we got to pray with discernment instead of out of reaction. Number two, we got to get it out. We got to talk about the, th the thorn. And number three, we got to let the thorn be a prompt instead of a trigger. Y'all, my heart for you and our church as, as we reframe our thorns we don't let the thorns define us. We actually use them as ways to invite the power of God. And in our weakness, he becomes strong. I want to pray for you, Jesus, right now. Pray for all those watching, whether they're in a Sabbath Sunday home, whether they're watching church online. Lord, I really believe you spoke today. Lord, this is going to be a word that people are going to anchor their lives to. Lord, Lord that this is going to be a word that's going to help them transform the way they see. There's continual annoyances and those continual troubles that we on this side of heaven are going to experience an abundance of. And devil, you want to use to try to take us out. But Lord, you don't give these things to us. These things are not allowed to take us out. They are allowed to make us more like you. So Lord, I pray by your grace and your power, Lord, let us pray with discernment. I pray that we would not be afraid to share. We'd find safe places and safe people to talk about these things. And Lord, we by your grace, when these thorns start poking, Lord, our reliance on you would start growing because these things are like it's time to pray. It's time to go into the presence of God. Instead of me going down a path of toxicity, I'm going to go towards the throne of grace to find help in my time of need. Thank you for the word that was spoken today. Use it, Lord, to guide your people this week. Let it be in their hearts, their minds, and their souls. As we take some time and worship you right now, Holy Spirit, would you fill us afresh with you? In Jesus' name, amen.